This is Food for Thought with Deborah Walker. Back with me today on Food for Thought on Natural Health Radio for the second part of our interview is Jerome Byrne, editor of the website Health Insight UK, an award-winning journalist who specialises in medicine and health. Great to have you back on to this week, Jerome. Thank you very much. Now, in our mainstream media, we get mixed messages continually about health, but never more so than with supplements. A new scientist recently wrote a piece called A to Zinc, what supplements are worth taking. Can you just give us a summary of the content of that article in New Scientist to give our listeners some background on why you've written such an expensive response to it? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yes, we entitled it um, uh, New Scientist Doesn't Know It's A From Its Elbow. Um, which kind of summed it up. It, it was rather extraordinary because I, like I, I guess most people, regard the new scientist as, um, <clears throat> you know, responsible, authoritative, being re- guided by the science. Lots of places claim they are, but new scientist was one of the places where you'd think they, they really would be. Um, but it, it uh, just completely ignored... Um, any the positive in, uh, evidence uh, in a remarkable way, really. Um, I'm not an expert on vitamins, sort of in, in a detailed way. I mean, I have friends who can quote you recent studies and findings and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, what I do know is uh, a bit about the history of the uh, idea and the subsequent very impressive research showing that B vitamins uh, can have a um, very specific and remarkably um, effective uh, impact on people who may well be heading towards Alzheimer's. Um, There's a a remarkable double-blind, placebo-controlled, etc., etc., ticks all the evidence-based boxes study that was done in uh, Oxford um, by a professor of pharmacology there which showed that uh, taking uh, B vitamins, very high doses of B vitamins, for uh, two years was able to lower the risk or the incidence of brain shrinkage um, by 90%, which is a remarkable uh, finding. And it's the kind of thing that if it was done by a, a, a drug, we wouldn't have heard the end of it. And there would have been studies and claims and follow-ups and, and so on. Um, but shamefully, it's been um, completely ignored by the Alzheimer's establishment. And even worse, the, um, uh, the New Scientist article, um, which covered... Uh, about 20 different supplements, um, you know, fairly briefly, probably about a couple of hundred words on each, um, simply said that there was, although there had been the hope that maybe B vitamins would have an effect on brain function, uh, in fact, the studies had found that uh, it didn't. Um, I could go into a bit more about the the negative evidence that the, uh, news, the, the that, that has come out, uh, which claims to disprove the benefits of it but which actually don't i'm not sure quite how much detail to go into for your readers but the um, that was one particular example in the new scientist article which was um uh, it it was so such a huge one that i felt it was worth going into considerable detail because if they could get something like that so wrong uh it did raise serious questions about the validity of the other stuff there was um uh, one of the comments which came from Patrick Holford, who's a nutritionist who I've written a couple of books with and um, he pointed out that uh, chromium was one of the things that was um, uh, th- th- that was said to have no effect at all um, despite the existence of a number of randomized control trials and meta-analyses and so on quite recently showing that there were benefits with uh, diabetes um, so you, you do have a picture um, of uh, that we're not getting a, a, a dispassionate, um, let's see what works as far as vitamin goes. Instead, it, 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 I'm not really keen on conspiracy theories, but it does look as if there is a concerted approach to, to downplay the, the benefits of vitamins. 
Well, for me, it was interesting because more or less around the same time, there's articles come out from the Smithsonian Institute, which have a similar bent to them, um, which I was reading. Um, mm. n- in nowhere near as the, the detail that New Scientist is, but they're, they're still... Um, uh, obviously a concerted effort and campaign um, that, that seems to be around all happening at the same time um, very much in the same vein Yes, well w- there, there's a, another area which I think is particularly interesting to do with, um, with, with the relevance of um, vitamins and supplements uh, which I could go into a bit which is yes, to please. do with their role in um, the elderly elder people Yes, Um, let's do that because actually the article does an assessment of B vitamins and, you know, as you talk about the the research around the slowing of memory loss, actually it's a very good piece of research that's been done, but the article is incredibly ill-informed on it. So please do go into more detail about that. Right. Well, this is, um, this isn't a point that's made in the New Scientist article, but I think it's something uh, that in terms of uh, how useful uh, vi- are vitamins and minerals and supplements, um, I-, I think one of the areas where it w- it's very hard to say, oh, it's just a waste of time. Um, you know, the, 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 the two favorite f- m- phrases that people use to d- dismiss any kind of vitamin supplement is you can get all you need from a healthy, balanced diet. And... Um, uh, it's simply a way of generating expensive urine. I mean, both of them are ignorant. Any drug treatment will create expensive urine um, because <laughs> you get it in the in the bloodstream and then it gets ex- excreted via the liver. And so, by definition, that that's where um, residue from drug treatments goes to. Um, the second thing is that um, the healthy, balanced diet. Uh, line really doesn't tell you very much first of all because in some of the cases such as um, the the B vitamin uh, effect on people who are beginning to get some of the early signs of Alzheimer's and the huge difference that that B vitamins can make um, there's absolutely no way that you could get that from a healthy balanced diet Mm -hmm. Um, you you would have to eat industrial quantities of of, uh, kind of, um, of of liver and and various other uh, there's not many sources sort of liver and um, w- w- other animal sources for B, uh, vitamin B12 in particular so that that just simply isn't true um, but I think that what's going on with elderly people is is a particularly vivid example of where vitamin and, and mineral supplements are relevant because uh, first of all you've got the fact that uh, they don't absorb uh, f- uh, vitamins and minerals from their food as well as people do when they're younger. Uh, everything sort of slows down rather and, and it becomes less efficient as we all um, uh, baby boomers uh, head into the sunset. Um, and so that's the first thing is that you're not getting it from the food. The second thing is that um, the, the appalling figure is that something like uh, a third of people, um, of older people over 65, admitted to hospital, and they make up about half of the hospital admissions uh, in a year. Um, about a third of them uh, are uh, counted as being um, malnourished, um, and there are studies showing that, that, that they're not really getting enough food. This may be for a number of reasons, um, possibly because they're on their own, possibly because they're not so much interested in cooking as they used to, they can't be bothered to do it for themselves, and so on. But they don't eat very well, uh, quite a proportion of them, um, and so they're more likely to suffer from uh, some sort of vitamin deficiency, quite apart from the fact that they're not absorbing it um, either. And then you've got um, a major impact on the levels of minerals and vitamins you have, which is almost totally ignored by um, any mainstream doctors, which is that um, one of the less known effects of drugs is that they inhibit the absorption and use of um, minerals and vitamins. Um, Perhaps the best known example 
is the case of statins and CoQ10. Mm -hmm. Uh, statins, as probably most people listening to this program will know, they, they block a pathway that um, is used to, to make um, cholesterol, but also to use to make um, CoQ10, which is a, a, an antioxidant and involved in, in energy production and, and, and particularly in the heart muscle, among other things, ironically. Um, there's a big debate about how much difference that makes, but um, it's certainly a factor that um, taking statins does lower your CoQ10 levels. Um, another uh, example is um, the di widely used diabetes drug metformin, which lowers your level of, of vitamin B12. Um, and if you're an elderly person uh, who's got diabetes and uh, high um, blood sugar levels, you'll almost certainly be put onto metformin. Your B12 levels are going to be low anyway because of diet and because you're not absorbing it as well. And then the metformin will give it a further bang on the head, as it were. Um, another widely used drug are the PPIs, the proton pump inhibitors, which reduce your um, uh, gastric secretion um, of acid in the stomach, which is given to huge numbers of people, partly as a way of dealing with one of the side effects of taking aspirin for pain killing um, for, for, uh, and, and, and also as for, for heart protection. Um, although whether that's worth it is a whole other discussion. Um, so you've got people on, you've got elderly people who are likely to be on quite a package of drugs. Di uh, the metformin, diabetes drug, common, PPIs, common, uh, drugs to lower blood pressure, um, pain-killing drugs, and so on. Um, and all of these uh, drugs will affect different uh, minerals and vitamins. Um, PPIs in particular, because they, by lowering stomach acid secretion, you affect digestion. And the processes which are used to extract some of the minerals and vitamins from diet um, don't show up. Uh, uh, aren't working as well and so uh, it's a very clear example of the idea of the health even if you're getting this um, healthy balanced diet uh, you still may not be able to extract it and your ability to extract it is being made worse by the, the drugs that you're taking so that seems to me to be an area where it would be having a much worth having a much greater um, look uh, being a part of the way that older people are looked after is that you do have a look at their mineral and vitamin levels um, and if they are taking uh, drugs which are reducing them either look at ways of, of cutting the drugs out or um, at ways of supplementing. I actually um, think as well something that's not looked into enough with our elderly is the layering of the drugs that they're taking so mm -hmm. I tend to find in my own practice that the older that my clients are they can be not just on one medication but on a number of medications Absolutely. and they can have been given by a number of different doctors and consultants who have not actually had any correspondence with each other and they, they may have been given over a number of years and never been reviewed and yeah. when only when they get involved with someone like myself um, yeah. do I actually ask them to go back and review the medications um, and what really concerns me is that there's no research done into the layering and the pharmacology yeah. around the mixing of all these medications yeah. together yes. <laughs> yes yeah I mean you're absolutely right and I, I think it's one of again the 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 elderly provide one of the examples of the complete breakdown of the whole idea that we're always being told about that um, mainstream medicine is is uh, evidence based and and everything is all done on the basis of trials and whereas um, anybody who attempts any non drug treatments um, is is kind of practicing woo and magic and snake oil and stuff with no no evidence at all. Um, you know, again, something that's regularly thrown at people who suggest mineral, minerals and, and vitamin supplements. Um, and then, as I've just gone through, um, the evidence for the saying it's all rubbish is, is extremely, uh, well, it's just simply ignorant in a lot of cases. Um, but this comes to a sort of perfect, there's a perfect storm for um, evidence-based medicine 
which does come with exactly what you've been talking about, which is sometimes known as polypharmacy, where mm-hmm. you've got these people on the, these um, 8, 10, 12 drugs all at the same time. And the reason that they get put on them is because the, 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 the model that we have is that you treat people um, on, according to guidelines. So for each condition, there's a set of guidelines which are based on randomized control trials and so on as to whether the certain drugs are beneficial and, and so on, um, which, leaving aside doubts about how reliable the trials are, but let's assume that they, they do tell you something useful, that may well be fine if you've got somebody who's got one condition um, but as you say, as soon as you start having two, three, four, five conditions, um, it, it becomes a nonsense because you get put on, you know, two, three drugs to deal with the fact that you've got raised cholesterol and a raised risk of heart disease and and uh, possibly high blood pressure and maybe a bit of diabetes and perhaps uh, some asthma. And so you, you can rapidly get to a high... And even though each uh, of those those de- prescribing decisions individually may have been based on what would, would be based on guidelines and evidence when you put them all together into one person there's absolutely no evidence that they of what they're doing at all and the nature of the system we have for checking things makes sure that there won't be any way because who on earth is going to run trials for a number of years in elderly people who incidentally are very are much less likely to be included in drug trials anyway and so you've, <laughs> you've got a further problem that um drug a a drug which is useful or shows up as being useful when given to a number of younger people with nothing else wrong with them may well not be what's needed for an older person whose system will be processing the drug differently and who's on a whole load of other drugs as well. So far from being a kind of clear, um, organized, evidence-based system, it, it's a completely random jumble of, of uh, and uh, again, as you say, nobody checking exactly what drugs are on or trying to work out how they're interacting or um, how, whether they're particularly suited for the person and, and so on. So um, it does seem to me that the, the way that we treat older people by ignoring diet, ignoring vitamins and minerals, and simply filling up them up with drugs is utterly unscientific and, and um, completely going down the wrong route. Now, I'm often left feeling really frustrated by research that's carried out on supplements because it not only tends to be what's considered I consider purposely poorly done but I feel it's also biased towards answering specific health issues I they test the nutrient in isolation and when that particular nutrient wouldn't actually be able to resolve the health issue that they're looking at on its own um, and therefore the nutrients end up almost being seen in a negative light and yeah. actually the trials for me seem to when they come out in the mainstream media they feel like they're very misleading is this just me or is this no i i think that, that you the um what comes out very clearly is that they are trials which if you were somebody who knew about drugs and were interested in answering questions you wouldn't do the trials in the way that they're done mm-hmm. i mean one of my favorite examples is um, vitamin E um, and heart disease. Mm. Uh, for about prior to the 2000, early 2000s, 2002 or 2003, around about then, um, uh, prior to that, there had been a number of observational trials um, and clinical reports and so on, which suggested that vitamin E was really quite beneficial for cutting the risk of heart disease. Um, There were then two or three major studies um, using vitamin E to see what effect it would have on heart disease, and they were almost uniformly negative. And so if you were to talk to a doctor now and say, well, what about vitamin E? Oh, well, the the evidence shows that they, they really don't have any effect. What this evidence shows ignores is the fact that um, all of the patients who were being given the vitamin E were also getting uh, statins. Now, (laughs) as we've just talked about, um, 
one of the effects of statins is to reduce uh, the amount of coenzyme Q10. And this is something that you probably know a lot more about than I do, but um, w one of the way that vitamin E works is by absorbing um, a, um, a free radical molecule um, and then it needs to be refreshed by con contact with um, another antioxidant and in the case of vitamin E uh, that antioxidant is coenzyme Q10 so if you wanted to devise an experiment which would show that um, giving people uh, statins would would make uh, vitamin E not effective that's the kind of study that you do and you can't say that the drug companies weren't aware of that because there are patented um, statins which are combined with vitamin E because right from the very beginning it was known of this CoQ10 effect but they've never actually been put on the market in this country anyway um, presumably because um, it was felt that they would it would draw attention to this this uh, th this issue which they didn't really want to do so that's and, and there are other examples of um, the effects of the drug being completely ignored in in terms there's a, a similar effect that goes on with vitamin B and, and smoke uh, carotene and, and smoking uh, which I won't go into now but that there are those cases where the, the, the study looks like it was being set up to fail um, a similar example with B vitamins and cognitive uh, development, um, loss of memory and so on in the elderly. One of the trials which has been brought out recently to prove that um, B vitamins don't have any effect on uh, y your risk of having cognitive impairment is one where they gave um, a number of healthy people, doctors, um, a standard amount of uh, a, mul a multivitamin which contained B vitamins over a six or seven year period and this had uh, no, no effect on that, the um, issue of um, having a poorer cognitive performance or memory performance um, which no one would expect that it would do because mm -hmm. the claim about B vitamins is that you've got to use a very high dose and it works when you've got somebody who has very high levels of an amino acid called homocysteine. If they've got high levels of homocysteine, you reduce it with high levels of B vitamins, there's a big impact on brain shrinkage. That's been established in a, in a very good trial. So giving people low doses of B vitamins who don't have raised homocysteine <laughs> and they're he uh, healthy anyway is not going to tell you anything and, and absolutely I agree it, 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 it does look as if the only reason for doing it is to prove that vitamins don't work So if that's the case and we, you know we've got respected journals like, like the New Scientist effectively having really strong opinions about supplements how, yeah. how, how, how do we move this forward in many well, respects so yeah, that people yeah, I, uh, kind of pass right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really I mean in, in a you know kind of quixotic and mad way I, I sort of hope that somehow if one does keep putting out pieces saying well actually this isn't the case and you need to look at the background and you know there are people who've done quite careful and detailed deconstructions of, of studies which um, are pick, picked up a they're, they shouldn't have been run in the, in the journal in the first place um, and secondly they're then picked up by other papers and you know vitamins cause cancer and vitamins don't work and so on um, in nearly every case uh, when you look at it, you, you can see that the, the, the way it's set up is, is not really a genuine investigation. How you get around that, I, I absolutely don't know. I mean, I, that's in a way why I'm interested in the elderly, the case of what goes on with older people, because it does seem to me that um, with a whole load of baby boomers heading in that direction, um, we're all used to A, being taken, you know, not simply doing what we're told and, and questioning and wanting to know what works better and what's cheaper and, and so on. So we're, we're much more in inquisitive and demanding. Um, and I think that there are going to be more people saying, hang on a second, you know, I've read about this, I've read about that, and you're saying these don't work, but what about this and so on. So I think there may be a kind of bottom-upwards pressure for for rather better 
um, uh, approaches to this, and, and uh, um, you know that there has been, for example, the um, the revolution, as it were, or the revolt among GPs over the latest drive to give statins to more people, and. Uh, study put out by Pulse magazine showed that at least 50% of those who responded uh, said that they wouldn't um, follow the new um, even lower guidelines for uh, for prescribing statins to people uh, because they really didn't think it was worth it or the benefit was enough and they wouldn't follow it for themselves or for their um, family. Uh, so that there is a, a kind of less of a readiness simply to to accept results in that way um but i think that probably um the best way is for uh, practitioner people who are using vitamins uh to get up to speed with some of the data and and mm -hmm. to respond to it in a kind of proactive way i mean I thought it was surprising that there wasn't dozens of people writing into the new scientists saying, what on earth are you talking about? Do you not know about this study or that study? And have you not examined that? And so on. I think that had people who are involved in using vitamins and who have knowledge about it and, and about the interactions and so on, got that out there and, and written letters and complained and tweeted and all made use of the social network and so on. I mean, that seems to me to be the way that, that it's going to go if you look at what's happening at the moment with the whole issue of uh, low-fat versus um, low-carb diets. Um, there's a huge amount of activity on the web um, pointing out the, uh, the, 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 the fact that the low-fat diet really does seem to have... Um, have very little credibility now um, and there's quite a lot of people who are very proactive on that I think that if one wants to get a change in the ideas of what's happening um, w with vitamins and minerals I mean I'm not saying they're perfect I think anyone would say that they're relevant for every situation but mm. to simply dismiss them entirely as being really no part of either staying healthy or of any kind of treatment is just simply wrong um, and I think uh, uh, nutritionists and, and people who, who use vitamins need to be a bit more proactive and a bit more challenging and a bit more aggressive about it. I completely agree with you, Jerome. Um, I believe our practitioners are nowhere near enough, uh, proactive enough um, about some of the information that comes out in regards to um, putting our own uh, cases forward. So yeah. uh, I completely yeah. agree. Jerome, this has been an, uh, another fantastic interview. <laughs> okay. uh, the time absolutely <laughs> flies by with you. Um, how do people find you on the internet, Jerome, so that people can read more about... Well, right. Um, well, the, I have two sites, actually. One is called um, healthinsightuk.org. That's just health, H E A L T H, insight, I N S I G H T, UK dot org, O R G, um, which is where I do some articles, but I also have a number of other people who are journalists or doctors or bloggers, people with an interest in a particular area who, who, who put in pieces f for me. And we've been, it's been going for about a year, and um, we, we, it, it seems to be growing, uh, growing interest in it. Um, and then there's another one called a body of evidence, which is really looking at the issue of how good is the evidence that, that we're told applies for, for various medical treatments and, and also for um, uh, non-medical, treat, uh, non-drug uh, treatments. Um, and that's at uh, Jerome Byrne, all one word, J-E-R-O-M-E, Byrne, B-U-R-N-E, uh, dot com. Um, and um, so do have a look and uh, put in some comments and do some tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the, 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 the blog body of evidence is, is a fantastic blog, um, one of my favourites. So uh, thank you very much for coming on today, Food for Thought Great, and Natural Health Radio. Enjoyed it. Thank you.